We have to go through some of the slides. Yeah? And if you, s you see in the handout, there are some slides that are additional material. Yeah? They are backup slides and, and something we could use or I could use. What I would offer to you is, is you can always ask us, you can ask the Envy Impact uh, project team yeah, if you have questions. Yeah? Uh, I can give you my business card. Yeah? I always try to answer in time and I will go through it. Um, there are a lot of buzzwords where you find in the web a lot of additional information. So this is kind of a germ cell yeah, in your thinking to change approach. Yeah, so one, some of these buzzwords that I was repeating, like open innovation and so on, it's, um, it's, it's something that, that you explore more and more and more. Yeah? And also for the ones that are using the, the video, they will see a lot of um, uh, connections where they can further upgrade their knowledge. Yeah? It's normally not possible to do it in such a short time. Um, the technology transfer is a lot about the how. How do we do that? And I'm really a fan of instrumentalizing or using infrastructures that exist already. Yeah? When, when I'm talking to companies or when I'm talking to our own company, I'm telling them we need to work together with the National Development Agency. Every country has that. Yeah? So use that. If you're a university, whatever, use the, the instruments that are given to you. A national development agency is normally running all over Europe and now in 53 countries. Everyone is running an infrastructure that is also supported by the national government and also the European instruments. And a famous example for this is the Enterprise Europe Network. Yeah? And we have here a colleague yeah, who knows the environment, um, who knows how they work, and you as a university should have a very, very close collaboration with them. Every technology offer that you have, every research result that you have, the Enterprise Europe Network can translate it into a technology opportunity. This technology opportunity goes into a database that is displayed in 53 countries. No technology transfer office in the world has this marketing instrument. So use these guys. You will not be able to do it like that. They will do it for you, and they are paid for it. So don't be shy. Use them. <laughs> they are paid for it. And this is true. I could give this speech in Germany, Switzerland, Norway, China, Ukraine, Albania, everywhere. You have these Enterprise Europe Network guys. Even if it says Enterprise Europe Network, the countries outside Europe understood that is a nice instrument. And I'm running also the Enterprise Europe Network in the United States. Yeah, so I'm the coordinator of the Enterprise Europe Network US. The web link to that one is us-eu-match.com. And, and this is the EN in US. We are doing it because we are learning a lot from the American approach. And the, also the Americans learn a lot about we are doing it with policy instruments. Because America did not have such a great system like we have in Europe in order to support SMEs. And the Enter Enterprise Europe Network is a nice instrument. Now US is using it also. In collaboration also with the NIST, National Institute for Standardization and Technology. The link is in person here um, to the EN. You can contact him. Uh, Matteo is via APRE, was also, is also part of the EN. So we know us in different projects, and one of them is also the EN. So we are in the same family. And here in Bulgaria, I made the link. You go on this um, HTTP enterprise minus Europe minus network dot BG. And now you can take every country um, um, acronym and you will find the infrastructures there. Or you go on the enterprise Europe network dot EU page, and there's a map, you click on the country, and then you see all the organizations that are working there. The idea behind this network is regionally to connect you. So there are people that help you to do your technology transfer work. And if you are a university technology transfer office and you don't work with them, 
from next week on, change your approach, work with them. Because you have publicity, you have possibility to distribute technology transfers, uh, agree, um, opportunities to such a community that where you never ever would be able to do that. Because they are seen by millions of millions of clients. It just increases your, your possibilities. What I would also recommend to do is um, um, stay connected to the ones who know how to do the things best. And I told you in the beginning when I was introducing myself that I'm working, um, that I'm board member and member of the Technology Innovation International, TII. TII is a network of people that do technology transfer and innovation support. It's an association yeah, that covers a lot of countries with 200 something members and especially in TII you have a huge amount of universities and technology transfer offices of universities and they are there together because they want to exchange good practices, talk about what works, what doesn't work, what can we do better, how can we convince our ministries to change the approach, what did you do in order to be successful. This helps a lot. Yeah? Don't reinvent the wheel. And then there are other possibilities in the web um, like CODIS. Yeah? I told you, you know, we are running it on behalf of the Commission. And in, in the European Commission CODIS uh, technology marketplace, you find a huge amount of technologies that are exploited out of research projects. Um, for you as a university, not so interesting because you are not the market. Yeah? But this is a way how you can exploit your technologies to a wider community. So you as a coordinator or as a member of the consortium, you would publish your results in a very nice way to describe the project results, more market oriented. You can do it for free on um, the EU, EU, uh, Europa.eu marketplace. Okay? Just check the link and, and look how it works. There's also a help desk. You cannot normally get lost. Another possibility on top, don't forget it, it's another possibility, another database, another huge system. Thousands of people that are just doing technology transfer for you. So there is, I need to explain it maybe, there is in China a person that has a portfolio of companies, SMEs or large companies, or in Canada or in US, that knows the need of their companies. And when you publish your technology opportunity there, the good Enterprise Europe network agent will say, wow, this is exactly what my company is looking for. It's the company I'm serving. So they will connect your technology offer with the US company, or with the Chinese company, or with the Indian company, or with the whatever. Yeah? This is how it works. These are instruments that for you are for free. Means you don't have to pay for it. Um, I say, yeah, in Bulgaria it's free. Um, in US it's not free. Because in US, if you try to go to the market with a for free service, <laughs> it doesn't work. Yeah, in US, companies pay for value. It's normal. They would never trust you that you do something good if you don't take money for it. It's just wrong market approach. Yeah. Yeah. When we when we go to our U.S. when we go to our U.S. clients, so our U.S. clients they are paying for our services. In Europe, they always say it's not possible. I'm not convinced. Yeah. If it's so impossible, but this is another story. Uh, I think. Clients need to be committed, and a price ticket on a service always helps to get the biggest commitment. Um, the services here for the Enterprise Europe Network in Bulgaria, they are for free. Yeah? So it means they are paid 50% by the European Commission and 50% by the um, uh, national government here. They are supporting it, co-financing it. Uh, they are not supporting. Uh, you so it is paid by by the organizations themselves. Okay, well done. Uh, I don't think <laughs> it's very well done. No, well done that you that you still manage to to run it because this is hard work. This is very hard work. 
yeah? uh, especially um, for um, uh, you know to co-finance such a system. I know the situation from Ukraine and also from Albania. It, it's very tricky. Um, chambers of Commerce in these countries are also not anymore like in Germany. They're not getting automatically their payment. It's a tricky situation. So these instruments should be used by you. And as a university, as a technology transfer office, you should be in close partnership with an EEN. It's for you something that multiplicates, multiplicates your opportunities. Normally, you, your own... Why are you in Facebook? Yeah? when you are in Facebook, because you want to extend the community. The same is if you're connected to someone who is in the Enterprise Europe network, you extend your, your community immediately without investing a lot of things. That's the reason why these countries are interested in joining them, even if they are not paid. So US is not paid by the European Commission, no? by the way. Let's move, because I'm running out of time. And the approach is, is kind of a four-step approach. The, um, if we talk about companies, yeah, so what, what needs to be evaluated is the innovation capacity within a company. What is the stage of this company? Um, and to make a marketing about this project, to make a first contact, to understand where are the needs of a company in order to be able to match it with an opportunity. Yeah? And what, what EN members help to do is they help you to write a good technology transfer profile. This is another challenge. To write a technology transfer um, profile, we could have another two-hour lecture about it, how to do it. And it will still not be enough. It is experience. You have to make out of research something that is attractive for the market. It's, um, it's not easy exercise to do it. Yeah, and the Enterprise Europe network also has a great advantage because every technology transfer profile has the same format. It means if it comes from China or from India or from wherever, it's always in English and it always has the same fields and always follows the same procedure. So it's very comparable. And it's, it's very good for companies that look for a specific solution because it's a uniform, it's a standard for doing technology transfer. And when you do it for your technology transfer office, I can tell you, you follow a standard that is not understood by the companies. How can they compare your technology offer with a technology offer from someone else? Via the EEN, you standardize the technology offers and then you can compare them. A company wants to compare opportunities. They do not just want to have one. And you must be the winner. So to be the winner, you must describe it properly. And here I can just recommend, please work together with the Enterprise Europe Network members because they have experience. They are trained. There are specific training events within the Commission in Brussels where these people are trained to write good profiles. Open innovation, and now it's good that I used so many examples. Open innovation is, um, I explained it already a lot, it allows an organization to acquire, integrate, and process external information more efficiently and effectively. Both. It supports the organization to overcome their local search bias. So they go out of their own environment. They say, why should we do a research when the research was already done by someone in whatever, India? You can get it there. Price is lower and you win time. It creates new form of interaction or interacting and collaborating with the external environment. It, for a university, it helps you to be the one who could use something out of research and find a market for it. It's via the means of open innovation. Let's skip this one. Open innovation, you must understand it as a strategic tool. It is a strategy. You have to have an open innovation strategy as a research center, but also as a company. And they are, you know, the, the big companies, if, if you check, um, I have Procter & Gamble, a yeah, famous example for it, Philips, Merck, BASF, all the big ones, yeah, Mercedes, 
BMW, everyone. They are all following this open innovation approach. Otherwise, they would not survive in this market. Yeah, and there are some you see in the in the market behavior that some some companies did not yet implement it, and they they struggle, especially companies that are public private, yeah, or um, run by by public uh, governments. They struggle. Big telecommunications that are more public or um, you know um, public rail transport and so on. Yeah, they fail because they have no proper open innovation strategy in order to reduce the price for the developments. And so you have to use it as a as a strategy, but you also have to understand that it's in a way the reduction of cost and making partnerships in order to reduce the price. It's not like a, a, a new methodology that um, that is um, it, it cost saving is behind. Yeah, it's 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 something out of globalization. You know, we, we, we did not have the internet before. Researchers and, and companies could never exchange information so fastly. Yeah, it was never possible before to understand technologies that are developed um, in such a short lifetime. Before you had to wait for the publication. The publication was published in the library. The library was you had to go to the library and to read it. Now you get a newsletter and all the publications are coming. Yeah, information is getting the speed information is carried is much faster. Um, you have to manage the uncertainty. This is open innovation. You, 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 you reduce your risk level because you say, okay, well, why invest 50 million for a research project if I can take something which is close to it? Yeah? And, and you balance your risk. Also, when you go for the challenge of research, you still have the opportunity to exploit it afterwards somewhere else. So you reduce definitely the complexity and the risk level. <clears throat> And, and I, think I, I said it already, we see via the Enterprise Europe network, there's a possibility to react on customer and market needs. This is the way how technology transfer works best. Um, every successful company that is dealing with technology transfer does not work with the technology push. Yeah? They only work because they work together with a company that has a specific need. And they let the market react and come with opportunities. I gave the example before from the military where they said, okay, I need to have an instrument that detects people during the night that are 200 meters away and I need to see who it is. Before they would have done it themselves, now they check the market and the market is doing it. <clears throat> and then you have different methods to do it. Yeah? Um, you can work with your biggest clients, lead user method, and to interact with, with your clients, there are toolkits, innovation contest. This is the, the championship for solutions. Again, the example from the military that I had a second before. Yeah. You ask the market, what do you offer? And then you make a competition between them. <clears throat> These days, you do it with crowdsourcing. They say it's crowdsourcing. You, you try to ask everyone why are Twitter, wire, social media, everything, <coughs> in order to get feedback, to find the, <coughs> the engineer as a private person, because he works in a company that has a solution and then says, oops, it could be something for our company. <coughs> and then you have in your material different examples of different networks and web links that you should check. Examples like for lead user method, open living labs, you have regional national clusters, industry associations, they are all using lead user uh, approach. You have toolkits for open innovation. I gave an example like the Enterprise Europe Network. And there are other also US examples um, yet to come was before Nine Sigma, the first quite successful technology transfer that was creating profit out of it. And then innovation contest, um, like Innocentive, you may know them, Nine Sigma, Enterprise Europe Network, they all work with the instrument of innovation contest to do technology transfer, to facilitate it. This one you know, what is new here are the white boxes. And, and this is 
to show you, especially if you're a technology transfer office, you should think about this. This is the customization of services that you could sell to your clients. Yeah, Your client could be the university, but your client can also be a uh, company. So these are service packages with the numbers here, Yeah, that are services that are sold. All the companies that I was mentioning before, they are selling these services to their clients. If it is selling with a price ticket or selling without a price ticket because someone else is paying. But also Enterprise Europe Network is not for free because the service has to be done, the people have to be paid, but it's paid not by the clients. Innovation management, market intelligence, landscape analyze, technology scouting, this is all on the level between research and development. Then you have IP licensing, yeah, big business, yeah, in the area more close to development. Uh, and then close to commercialization is also an EN service, it's B2B collaboration, business to business. How can I sell my sausages in another country? Yeah, It's more the commercialization, it's, it's the market penetration. It is the selling of the product. Yeah, um, So very much on the right side. And then partnership development also in, in creating, um, if you detected the market, that you use your technology to work with a new partner in order to explore the market. Because this company is already knowing the market and they are in the market. So they have much easier marketing instruments and market penetration than you have. And this is just building a group um, on the services that I described before. So you have Toolkit for Open Innovation. This works very much on the left side. Yeah, It's between research and development. And then you have the innovation contest. And the innovation contest, in a way, covers everything. Yeah, It covers all the different services. And then you have the lead user method. It's also well known. Clusters, for example, work like that. Yeah, They are covering. Um, almost everything, but they don't take care a lot about the innovation management. Yeah, This is a service they normally don't cover. Um, yeah, The driving force to innovate, um, I, I will skip this one. Um, Spin-off of companies. I mentioned it already in different, with different examples. It is important to think about um, not only licensing out a technology, but also to make a new business out of it. So there's one opportunity you have is to create the new business with a business plan, try to find investors. There are public instruments that help you, like business incubation, uh, business incubators, yeah? and they help you with infrastructure that you can build within their rooms, their houses, their infrastructure, their services, a new company. And you have to look for the investment, of course. Yeah? And this is another possibility how you can exploit a research. Okay? So these are the different instruments that you, that you could use in order to facilitate or really exploit research. And when you, when you write your next proposal, use the full, full basket of services. So the Commission understands well, very well that you understand how it works these days. Yeah? So this is great help in your new proposals that you say, I'm not doing everything myself, but I know there is the technology, there is the Enterprise Europe network. I will use them. I will more work on an uh, you know, I, I'm following the open innovation approach because the research is not for our own research. We want to create new collaboration with universities. We will capitalize the methodology, whatever. Yeah. So I have in your in your handouts, you have a lot of backup material. Yeah. Um, this was just foreseen for the case that you have specific questions, and then I would have the right uh, thing there. Please, if you have questions to these backup slides that you find, contact me, contact the project team, and we'll go through it.